and one. Holy cow. Guys, if you're an electrician, you already know how frustrating IKEA light fixtures can be. They are like, <laughs> so I'm here to show you an electrician's perspective on hanging an IKEA light fixture. Some of these principles are generally applicable to all IKEA light fixtures that I've hung. And we do have a local Ikea, so that's been quite a few, but they're still so frustrating sometimes. So I'm taking down this perfectly good, perfectly good Hunter ceiling fan, and uh, we'll be putting up this, this light fixture. Yeah, totally cool. There it is. All right, so just a quick perspective while I'm holding this really heavy ceiling fan by the glass shade. Um, oh, the black wire is the fan or potentially the light, you have to say, a lot of times there's a label, I don't see a label here. Red is the other of the two, white is neutral, and green is ground. And that pulled right out. So, either poor connection or when the fixture kinda fell. It's not bad to have a second hand, when either taking down or putting up a fixture, particularly if it's heavy. You double and triple check everything, because it's important, you never know when a white, that should be a neutral, is actually being utilized as a hot and it just hasn't been properly labeled or connected. So, taking precautions, I'm gonna straighten these conductors out so I can get this mounting bracket down off of them. <clears throat> Hopefully there's a box up here. Things really get involved when you have to start putting in, whoop, uh, an electrical box because maybe the, the mounting bracket was just screwed to some framing, wasn't properly installed onto an electrical box. But I'm seeing a box up there, so that's big. That's huge, actually. You can add a trip to the hardware store and an hour to the project if there's not an electrical box, because it is required, and you're gonna have to put it in if it's not there. Looks pretty good. I've got a connector into the box right here, so that wiring is properly secured and protected. The ground screw wasn't utilized, so we're gonna tidy that up. All right, so now I've got one of my favorite basic tools that I'd highly recommend to you, a non-contact voltage detector. If you use a name brand tool, you're gonna get better results and no uh, phantom reads. So I've got a decision to make here real quick. I've got two switch legs coming into this box. That means one switch controls this conductor and one switch controls that conductor. If I'm picky, I might wanna determine which of those I'm gonna connect the light to based upon what's the more logical switching order. So I'm not doing one of those, oop, da, da, da. So I'm just gonna check it real quick. I think I want the black one. Let's try it. I flipped one switch and they're both reading and that's just because um, one's getting induced off of the other conductor as they are together in the jacket. So that's frustrating. I've gotta pull out my multimeter. One of those is a dimmer switch and that's the one I want. Okay guys, it's getting too complicated already. Shoot, you just wanted to hang an Ikea light fixture, now we're pulling out test equipment. Okay, so I'm sticking one probe, either probe, and you can buy these things cheap for like five, 10 bucks. Um, so I'm sticking one probe in there, and one, holy cow. So red is our conductor. So we did find out is red is the conductor of choice here. I'm glad I tested it. I'm getting 42 volts on black. That's why it was picking up a phantom read. Um, that's <laughs> disappointing. <laughs> and we're just gonna tuck that up and out of the way. We're done with black. He is a non-factor. So uh, it's red, white, and green. Sorry for the confusion and complexity, guys, but sometimes that's the reality. So for those of you who don't have test equipment, I'm going to give you a quick alternative method to determine which switch leg and whether it's working or not you want to use. I'm just unpackaging my light fixture components. And because this is a DIY project, I'm standing on a chair and I'm staging my components on a couch just so everybody feels right at home. All right, so these cords, this is probably the hardest part of the job right here, I kid you not, is stripping these molded cords because they're molded around the individual conductors and there's just a hot and a neutral. There's no ground through here because this is fully plasticized. There are no exposed metal components. So you have to be real ginger to avoid cutting the internal conductors. And so it's like, you gotta be like a mouse 
nibbling on the cheese. It's just so tenuous. Uh, because as soon as you cut into those conductors, and you've got to start over and your cord just keeps getting shorter and shorter. There, I've got it a little bit. I'm gonna to have to do it one more time. But I did not damage the conductor, so that's the plus right there. So here's the method for utilizing a light bulb to test your switch and your power. We're gonna connect our neutrals. And we've already determined the color we want is red. At least we think it is. That's our switch leg of choice. Because this was a fan, there were two switches. One for the fan, one for the light. Which is nice. All right, now we're gonna flip the switch and see if the light comes on. Boom. There it is. Notice that little flicker? Hmm. Oh, it's, no, it's still kind of giving me that flicker. That's not an issue of the listed quality of the connections. It's because this is not a dimmable LED and it is a dimmer. So if we dim that down, it actually cleaned it up a little bit. It's almost worse, worse right in the middle, right there. Got that strobe. So we'll just put it on full bright for now and we'll get a different bulb that is dimmable. That's it. And then you kill the power to so make sure that you're, you're off and proceed with the project. Okay, so I'm setting up the light fixture here now. I'm just weaving uh, in a manner of my, my own personal choice here, weaving the, the uh, socket, cord socket through the light. It's kind of a quirky, just like metal fork. There we have it. So my overall desired dimension from the ceiling to the bottom of the light, it's pretty low, it's kind of an intimate light, but it's, uh, it's a funky space. We've got these plants, we've got the green walls, we've got the accent lights, and the, it's just a funky space. So 35 is my desired dimension. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave another, so that's from bottom of fixture to ceiling. I'm gonna go ahead and leave another about 10 inches of cord and that's gonna allow me what I need to make the wiring connections. So I'm gonna be so bold as to cut it right there. All right, it's final at that point, 35 inches. I'm gonna bring it back. I don't need all of those 10 inches to be stripped. I'm gonna kinda of go slowly, give myself a little latitude. And again, this is the hardest part right here. You could use uh, a knife and you could kinda of score around it carefully carving that off until you're able to slide the molded jacket off. Well, you could use some sort of snips or diagonal cutters to get in there. I'm gonna go ahead and use, I've got a lot of control with these wire strippers. All right, now here's the other thing. You are gonna to have to have a pair of wire strippers if you're installing into a ceiling and you're gonna to wanna to be mindful of the gauge of your wire. It uh, may be marked on one of the conductors in this case, I'm just gonna take it easy and use a gauge that I know is a little bit too large on my strippers to trim this wire. And um, that's gonna avoid damage to those very finely stranded copper conductors. After stripping, I'm gonna take each of those and I'm gonna twist it to the right. That's important, twist it to the right. You don't want any of those strands be to become splayed out and you don't want to go to the left, because then when you put the wire nut on to the right, which is the direction of the threads, then you'll undo your twist. So on to the right. Now I've got a good, that's exactly what you want. Solid. Okay, now here's the quirky little part. Gonna, there's gonna be this little hook that you're gonna thread into the mounting plate and snug it down all the way. And then there's a nut for the backside to make sure it doesn't twist off, really no way it could. Snug that down, tool tight. Not death grip, sometimes guys who are used to heavier sorts of work will just come in to a, an electrical job and start stripping stuff and torquing stuff off and it's not intended to be a brute, brute trade. So there we go, now we've got a prepared mounting bracket. That's gonna go right to the ceiling like that. Our cord 
by means of this apparatus here is going to mount then to our mounting plate. So let's get the sequence of operations right here. Next, I'm going to mount this plate to the ceiling. All right, <clears throat> this is where it gets controversial. I did just do uh, grounding <laughs> to my box by means of a midstrip as opposed to a separate pigtail. If you're an electrician, you've got an opinion. If you're not, just make sure if you've got a metal box, it's grounded. A midstrip is where that conductor is stripped back in the center section there. And uh, I use that to terminate around the green ground screw. Make sure you follow your local codes and standards. Indiana is still in the 2008 National Electrical Code. Oh yeah! Um, power is still off, right? Woo! Good. It well, definitely would have sparked pretty, pretty mightily in my face if it wasn't, but I, I knew it was. All right. <clears throat> so now we've got our wiring brought through here. It's time to mount our mounting plate. All right. <clears throat> Don't over tighten it. You can actually compress your drywall and cause a, a crack. I've got just a little bit of distress on the ceiling there, so that's a that's a real potential reality. But that snaps on, so we can go ahead and slide our canopy on. Now, our mounting gizmo. Look at that. It seems somewhat reasonable to me. I like how that looks, so I'm going to raise the whole thing up. And I need to raise it up five inches. Five inches. If you don't have a folding rule, that's okay. You can use a tape measure. I forgive you. So I'm going to match the conductor ends. I'm going to kind of twist or pinch them together. Get that wire nut to seat over both conductors. In this case, it's white to white. Good grab. Tug test on the little conductor because it's the one that's going to want to pull out if you're not careful. All right, same thing on the other one. That works. Tug test. All right, I do need to raise this up. Loosen it up. Open the clamp, for lack of a better term. And I need a five inch delta. That's right there. Just making a five inch adjustment here. There it is. Use my thumb to mark the spot. Pull it through. And let's hang it up right there. Don't want any wires to be caught or pinched. Let's double check the 35. I'm committed to the 35. It's low, but it's gonna feel intimate. And that's the, that's the feeling we want in this room. Lower light fixtures create more intimate spaces. All right, now I'll take a look at that. That ceiling fan was nice and big and covered that little bit of stuff I'm seeing around the edge there. I don't like it real, real well. That's disappointing. I could use a fixture medallion to cover that up. I'll drop a link to a plain fixture medallion in the description. So here's the deal. I have no idea what this is, <laughs> but I don't feel like it's needed. I've got smooth wire entry. All my connections are made. The fixture is supported. And this is then going to hold up my canopy. Okay, so I brought the uh, I'm going to call it the collar, brought the collar down, snapped it together, and now I'm mating it up to the canopy. I'm going to try to kind of slide my canopy so I get the best coverage. I feel like it's there. Wow. So, advantages to being a master electrician, almost zero when it comes to IKEA. I feel like I'm, I'm qualified to make the wiring connections, but all the rest of this, you're just as good as I am. We'll figure out what this part does. Check the description for more information. It's a lot easier to eat Swedish fish than it is to put in Swedish light fixtures. And I would say real skills to make real money, but in this case, I'd just be happy if you subscribed. <laughs>